All right, first things first, this microphone was sent to me by one of the distributors of Texo and Audio Products, and I have been asked to review this. Uh, they are not paying for the review, and they do not get to see it before it goes out. However, this product was provided free of charge for testing. This is the TechZone Audio Product Stellar X2 microphone. And uh, as you can see, my face is slightly obscured today. Not really a problem, I don't think. But uh, the reason for that is I want to record this whole overview or review on this microphone. The most important thing by far about any microphone is how it sounds. Well, this is how it sounds, right? I'm using this currently in a fairly well-treated room, so this will give you a good impression of how the microphone sounds. As is normally the case with these kind of cardioid condenser mics, I'm using it from a distance of about five to 10 centimeters. You can see how far away I'm using it. So this really is how this mic sounds. It's an interesting one because this isn't a cheap microphone. These sell in the UK for £279.99p, I think, which uh, is quite a lot more than in the US. Uh, in the US, you'll get one of these for $199. But originally, when uh, Booth Junkie did his review of this, and he did it up against directly up against the, the Neumann U87, I would love to have a U87 to test it up against, but he did that, and at that point, this microphone came in at $140. However, it's still strange, because this is really in a quite a basic, cheap case, really. This is the case... If I am correct in saying this, I hope I'm correct in saying this, but I, from what I can tell it is, this is the case of a BM700 microphone. So it's a pretty stock and fairly cheap microphone case. You can pick up a BM700 for about £40. So certainly nothing impressive about the case. The shock mount that's provided with it, pretty cheap as well. This thing, I, I'm not a fan of these kind of squeeze to squeeze open, slot the microphone in. They're, they're very rigid and I'm really not quite sure how well they work as a shock mount at all. I've seen them used in other low, other budget microphones and it's, it's not great. I mean, to get with a £280 microphone, I'm not going to say it's the best shock mount in the world. The kind of thread at the end. There's just there's some stuff that just isn't that good about this mic. But let's go on to the good bit. What TechZone say they've done with this mic is essentially take all kind of their own custom parts, make up a standard, fairly standard microphone circuits. Because let's, let's be honest, a lot of microphone circuits are quite standard these days. And they've uh, taken what I believe is a Shups microphone circuit and they've put in quality components where quality components are needed, such things such as Weimar capacitors and, you know, decent, decent, sort of components that are going to make the noise floor, the, the noise level on this mic really quite low. And they've also custom made a K67 style capsule. And a K67 capsule is the same one that's used in the uh, U67 microphone from Neumann. And um, well, uh, the U87 uses a slightly different one, but they essentially sound the same. And uh, this is, I'm not making any claims that this is exactly the same capsule as in those microphones. However, it is the same style of cap capsules. What the guys at TechZone have attempted to do is imitate the U87 sound. And really, if you want <laughs> the best review on this, is it was done by Booth Junkie. And uh, when he when he compared it directly to that U87, it it really, I mean, I I kind of started listening to it on a laptop, and then I kind of thought. Actually, I'm going to have to listen to this on something better. So I put listen to listen to it on my monitor speakers, and then I thought to myself, I'm going to have to listen to this on something better. And so I put on my reference headphones, and there really wasn't that much difference between them at all. There was there is one thing that's different between them, and that's the uh, that's the, the noise floor, the noise level on the mic. It is higher on this microphone, but apart from that, they are damn close. Considering the Neumann 80, U87 is a three thousand pound microphone. Well, I mean, I haven't looked at the price recently because it's just way out of my league as far as uh, a microphone goes. But uh, this is, say, in the UK, £280. In the US, $199 or $200. So if it sounds close, it's an absolute bargain. But you can make, make up your own mind. What Do you like the sound of it? What do you think of it? I mean, it's supposed to sound... Uh, not too bright because a lot of microphones have a kind of like notch at the end to kind of, you know, a lot of road stuff, for example, my NTG3 microphone and my 
Rode Broadcaster you can see sat back there on the desk, they've got quite a kind of bright sound to them. And that's nice for certain things, but if you're going to have a microphone that's really listenable and isn't fatiguing to listen to, it's nice not to have that and have something, a very kind of nice flat response across the range. So let's just take a look. I mean, this microphone comes in this box. They said they provide it in a nice, nice kind of fairly sturdy case. It's decent enough. It comes with a, a foam pop filter. Uh, the foam is not very dense foam. It's, to be honest, it's really not great foam at all, it, as is often the case with, with I, I can't actually, I really can't get my head around this bit, that TechZone have provided not great accessories with a microphone they're charging 280 pounds for they need to provide if i spend 280 pounds on a microphone i want reasonable accessories with it I, I don't want anything that suggests it's cheap because 280 pounds i know it's not 3000 pounds but it's still not a cheap microphone so you expect good accessories with a microphone at that price but i think they've kind of let that down a little bit by providing not great stuff with it However, they do provide a testing card to say that this microphone has had all relevant checks done and on what date, you know, a date stamp to say it had this, that, and the other check done. And, um, and then you've got your information about the mic, and I'll just cover some of those for you. So the model is, of course, the Stella X2, and the capsule is a gold-sputtered 34 millimeter K67 style capsule, 20 hertz to 18K. There we go, it only goes up to 18K. Most mics will, will easily go up to kind of 20K, uh, but uh, this has specifically got a kind of drop off there at 18K. They're not trying to make this a mega bright microphone. Polar pattern is fixed at cardioid, and I've seen people on forums talk about this and say, well, it's a shut circuit, so this can do different cardioid patterns. You could, you could easily do that. I, d I don't know about the technical side of it in that sense. I don't know how easy that would be to do. I honestly don't think it's a problem. I mean, yes, it's fixed to a cardioid pattern, but for most people's use, that is going to be perfectly okay. Sensitivity, minus 31 dB. Impedance is 140 ohms, and the maximum uh, SPL, maximum sound pressure level, is 130 dB. Equivalent self-noise figure is 13 dB, which is perfectly fine for a studio microphone. It's not down there. Again, with the U87, that's probably down somewhere around 7 or 8 dB. Uh, other mics that I've got are down at kind of 8. Uh, my, my Sennheiser MK8, I think, is like around about 8 or 9 dB. Uh, you'll notice also, I'll, I'll just show you this, actually. So this is the MK8, and you'll see the difference in size between these two. There is, I mean... I'm holding them at the same plane. It looks like I'm holding this one closer, doesn't it? But no, <laughs> this is that it's a really small case, and this is this is what you get with you know. That's why I say it's in a kind of budget case. Yeah, so it comes with a a, a nice little kind of case, you know, almost like a pencil case. Microphones always come with those things. Uh, this this pretty horrible shock mount. Don't like that much. Uh, and uh, the foam cover and the um, the the case. Again, standard, fairly standard stuff for a, for a microphone, but it's all about the sound. How does it sound? What do you think? I'd be really interested to uh, hear what you think about this microphone. Do put down something down in the comments uh, as to whether you think it's a microphone worthy of a £280 price tag. Is it worth a $200 price tag? Because £280 is $383 at the time of recording. That's a lot, right? A lot more. I asked the distributor about that who sent this to me, and they said, yeah, shipping and taxes. Really? Shipping and taxes? That much? God, that um, sounds like a lot to me. Anyway, I'm doing a lot of talking in this video int intentionally because I'm showing off the microphone, but let's just do a, a couple of little checks on the mic. So uh, as I say, this is using the mic at about five or 10 centimeters. And uh, if I move a little bit further away from the mic like that, uh, you probably, it'll start to bring a little bit more of the room in, uh, but uh, levels will drop down. I'll leave the levels as they are uh, in the uh, video, but um, you can see how much the levels drop off as I back away. So now let's level match it. So even though I'm kind of 20, 30 centimeters away from the mic now, let's level match it and uh, then coming in closer. And let's try something. Uh, what about the uh, proximity effect? Well, I'm not sure how much popping we're going to get on the microphone now because I am trying to use it slightly from the side here. Uh, but um, yeah, that's uh, getting in really nice and close to the mic. My levels are okay on the, uh, yep, checking on my recorder, the levels are all right. And uh, yeah, so that's how it uh, sounds if you get in nice and close. What about from the side? Well, I'm just gonna rotate the mic around now on my, uh, on my stand. So there we go, that's the mic from uh, the same distance of about five or 10 centimeters at uh, 90 degrees off the side of the microphone. 
and then I'm gonna turn it 108, lean a bit further forward to get from the same distance, and that's at 180 degrees off the back side of the microphone. Wow, I'm just checking my levels there. We're down at minus 35 dB there. That's really doing having some good rejection there on the on the wow. Pretty impressive. Okay, so let's bring that round back to the front again. One thing uh, one additional thing I would say before I go and leave you in peace uh, to either check this, Amaz this, this product out on Amazon. I'll leave links in the description. If you'd like to support the channel, please do check out those links if you want to look at this mic. Or in fact, just look at anything on Amazon because um, if you click on that link, uh, the channel will get a small commission for anything you sort of buy on Amazon. And even though it could be just a some bed sheets or something like that. But uh, I, think, I think the commission still comes through if you use that link. I don't know. Anyway, it's up to you. And uh, yeah, the mic is incredibly hot. It's, it's, it's the, the output of this. I mean, you get certain mics. Uh, I forgot I forgot what the, the Shure microphone, you know, the, uh, the, the famous, the infamous podcasting microphone. Um, oh my God, is it SM7 or something? No, I can't, oh, I can't think of the name of it. Anyway, that is notoriously, you know, you often need kind of a, a kind of something in line to increase the level because a lot of preamps are just too kind of deaf or the impedance doesn't match or something like that. This thing, usually on my RME sound card here, the levels on the mic channels will be at around about 38 dB. This thing I have to drop to 28 dB. My camera, I've plugged this into my camera here and I've had to drop the levels right down so I've got no kind of, so I'm not peaking. It, the output on this is immense don't think however that the noise floor is lower in comparison so if you've got the level higher the noise floor will be higher so to match you just match the two and you'll notice that the level of your preamp is much much lower than it would otherwise be so there we go please put something down in the comments what do you think do you like the sound of it well i would expect it to sound fairly decent but it's an interesting project isn't it i like the idea almost like a kind of sort of lamb dressed as mutton if you like that, that's is that rude yeah i think that probably is rude probably shouldn't say that it's, it's lamb just it's, it's a really it's a basic case basic everything else cheap thing but with really good stuff inside that's the idea so thanks very much for watching and um i will see you next time <laughs>